All right, so we're having a quick look at this boiler um, and I have an intermittent problem where it sometimes won't start. Um, at the moment, um, I have it up and running, but um, I have this cover removed so I can take the cover off the boiler. But you will get some blinking codes here, some either fast or slow. And there's a chart that I'll add on to the video that actually describes um, the diagnostics of those and tells you um, what might actually be causing the problem. Uh, combined with the noise it's making, my suspicion is it's going to be a bearing. So I'm going to just fire it up and see if the noise will come, come through on the camera. Um, So we can hear the normal noise as the fan gets going. Um, sometimes the fan isn't getting going, so that's why I'm suspecting the bearing. Um, but there's also a kind of a whirring noise in there, which is typical of when a bearing is on its way out. So what I did, or what we should do to get it going is to take off the cover and a little bit of WD-40 on the top and bottom bearing, just to see if it fires up and if it quietens it. And um, if it does, then we know that we need to change the bearings or the fan. So I'm going to just take this cover off and then come back. So obvious supplies, you're going to turn off the power and also um, turn off the gas as well. There's a screw up here and after you remove this little face plate down here, you have two screws. There's one there and one there. And then once those are out, then the cover can be slid off. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside, and you can already see there's evidence of it getting quite warm right there. Um, so this is the fan, and that's what's actually causing the wearing noise. Now this one moves okay now, because I gave it a little drop of WD-40, and how you want to do that is to just spray it on just up there where the top bearing is, and just under there where the bottom bearing is and then you can test it again and if it fires up and if it starts to move easier or make less noise then you know that the bearing itself is a problem it feels okay now but that won't last obviously so I'm going to need to change these bearings um, to remove the van there's a clamp there and there's some electrical connectors here and once that's out of the way we can disconnect here this is the air pressure switch as well disconnect these Take a note of where everything goes and we'll be able to take the whole fan out and then separate the fan housing from the motor itself so i'm just going to give this a little start up here just to um to see how the fan reacts and we might be able to hear a little bit better what it's like ah yeah doesn't sound good at all so the noise the origin of the noise is right here down again so it might be a little hard to understand what's actually happening here but this tray here is actually the mount for the um, the fan housing and it's held in with these little compression clamps here with these screws that's pulling downwards so once this is loosened here and here um, we should be able to then slide this out and I've already loosened the jubilee clip that's in the back there and then we'll undo that one if we need to wiggle it a little bit um, power cables are off here and then disconnect those and should slide away nice and easy so with this one loosened here you can kind of see how it moves it's just slid on the track there um, some of them can be a little difficult to get to so there's one can you see in there one in the back and on this side as well there's one just over there um, so if you can't reach those what you can do is using a small screwdriver like this from the side you can actually loosen the rail that's holding those on so that's what I've done just right there just loosen that and effectively the same as getting in there and loosening that one so everything's loose now we have the bolt taken out of here and the only thing I'm holding it in now is this uh, clamp so I've undone the clip and 
It's like a kind of a afternoon shaped clip that goes around the back of the pipe. So you just straighten out the clamp itself like that and then off she comes. And then we should be able to get a bit of movement out of this itself. There we go. So the pipe is disconnected. And the fan is coming out. So you can see the fan on the other side there. We just need to disconnect some of the um, the pipes here. So these go to the air pressure switch and to the little sampling port on the top here. So uh, make sure to take note of the orientation and put everything back as it's supposed to be. All right, so I have the fan out now and on the uh, workbench. So the aim here is to take this bearing and the one on the opposite side, which is just in there and replace them with um, these two MTK bearings that I got. So what we're going to have to do is take off these stair clips and this um, cap that's on the top of this bearing and we might have to remove the um, screws here that mount the actual plate to the bearing housing because we're probably going to have to knock that shaft out through the top bearing but we'll um, cross that when we come to it. So the way this kind of works is, um, so obviously you have the motor here, this here is like a cooling fan and on the inside of the housing itself is the actual blower fan which is in here. So there's effectively two fan blades um, and that's what stops you from just lifting it up. So we need to actually bring the shaft out through the bearing and through the coupler here. So this probably has an allen key on the shaft that's actually locking it onto the shaft there. Um, but we'll have a look at that once we get this stuff out of the way. So I've removed the bottom plate and the elbow here. And if you look through here, you'll see there's actually a hole in one of the fan blades. And that's so you can sneak through an allen key. And that allen key will then go into um, the shaft in here. And you want one that has a bit of length to it. And there's a little, um, a little key in there that's locking this piece onto the shaft. So we just want to break that loose like that and then that should come off and once that comes off then we'll be able to separate the um, top section here I've already removed the three spring clips and um, so once we get this bottom piece off the whole top piece will come out okay so a little progress um, if I flip this over I've managed to loosen the allen key there and twist the um, the blower fan off the shaft itself. So this is all completely separate now. And since I took these spring clips off, this whole unit should lift away. And there we have it. So that's the entirety of the motor. That's the shaft that was keyed onto the allen key down below. Um, so we can put this aside. There's also this little spring in here. Um, so, loosened off these Phillips and then we can lift that away and then we can lift the actual motor coil itself. There we go. So then we're left with just this bearing here and that bearing down there. So what we have to do is knock this out, make sure not to deform this fan. And then we can um, install these new bearings, hoping that we have the right size, and then we're good to go. So yeah, we found the culprit in this bearing. Um, I just gave it a quick brushing, and we can see the size of it is 626Z1X. Um, it's inside this little conical housing here. So we have to knock that out, and then I can install this bearing here, the MTK one. And you can see just how stiff it is it just will not turn in fact i might pop out the um shielding on it there and see what we can see inside you can't break it any more than it already is there we go 
So it's absolutely manky in there. It looks like it's um it's probably overheated and I had a plastic um like a, a plastic bearing cage and that's melted and actually just clogged up the whole bearing. So this one here actually has a metal cage inside and then metal shields on the outside so hopefully it'll be a bit more longevity in that one. Is that in focus? There we go. So let's try zoom in and get a decent look in there. Yeah, so that's a bearing cage that's just been totally melted. So I just knocked off the uh, little sleeve that was on the bearing. And now you can see the two of them side by side. So this new bearing will go in that sleeve and then we'll just do the opposite. Um, we also have one more bearing that's just in there. I think that one's quite healthy, but uh, we'll change it where we can anyway. Right, so we're just going to spin off this fan blade here. It feels a little bit wonky, so I might have to just hammer it straight. So that's that out of the way. Then off comes that. And the same again. This one is a lot healthier. So yeah, that bearing feels quite good. And the race came off easily. So now we're just going to install the new bearings and then reassemble. So I've reassembled this now. First thing I did was to put on the new bearing and the little conical kind of um, fitting that goes on top. Um, there's a couple of square nuts in here and they will actually hold this all together. So place this back on here, put the top bearing on, the top cap, put the screws in and then install the square nuts, tighten them down. I um, haven't installed the fan yet so that will go on uh, there and then there will be a spring washer on there. So that's the last thing you do before reinstalling this onto here. But as it is it's much more smooth now. It's spinning lovely. And I have the two old bearings here. So this is the bottom one and this is the top one. The bottom one is actually still quite good and the top one is absolutely worn out. It won't, it won't turn at all. Yeah, I can hear it already. So this, um, this fan blade is actually held on purely with friction alone just on this center shaft and just from sort of age it's going to loosen up so before I put it on I'm just going to squeeze it out a little bit like that and then as I put it on here onto the shaft it's going to be quite tight and then I'll use a socket like this to just drift it down to the right height and then we'll hold nice and tight and then what I want to make sure is that it's balanced and that it's not wobbling all over the shop. So you can see what I mean by wobble. So what we want to do is just straighten out as much of that as possible. Um, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because it's very lightweight. It won't actually cause much of an imbalance. But you want it to be nice and tight on the shaft and also reasonably straight. Because we don't want it to have to rub off the housing as it's turning. Okay, so still reassembling, but I now have um, the spring in here on the, um, the little rubber foot. And I have the Allen key back in here. And we can give it a little test to spin it and just make sure nothing rubs. You can see it's so spilled and it, it keeps a lot of momentum as well. So it's a good indication that the bearings are working nice in there. So next up is the spring clamps and then to spring clips rather. And then to um, reinstall this back on the plate and then back into the boiler. So that's the rebuilt fan ready to go back in. And just need to make sure that uh, all the connectors are plugged in in the right order. So we took some pictures of that beforehand and then to reattach the pipes there to the back and give it a little test. So right now I can uh, I can spin it. It's really free and there's no noise at all. So here's hoping that's it sorted now. Okay, so everything's back in now and we're good for a test. Um, already connected back up the power to the motor and all of the tubing here 
for the APU uh, or APS or whatever. Little test on the motor and it's spinning nice and free. No rubbing on the housing. Um, tighten back in the, um, the fan plate and also the fixings on the side here. So we're good to go and um, we'll give it a little test. I'm just going to turn on the power. Ah, it sounds a lot better. Doesn't have that high pitch kind of squeal. Ah, yeah, doesn't sound good at all. Ah, it sounds a lot better. Doesn't have that high pitch kind of squeal. Turn on. There we go. Sounds good. Yep, really nice. No whining at all out of the fan.